I'm going to make mistakes. I'm going to probably go through very embarrassing moments. But once you go through this, you can do anything. In Korean, how do you say 20? Egypt. Egypt. In Thai, 20. Oh. How do you say 30? Should I sing it how it's supposed to be sung? Should I sing it how I sing it? Lenny Bloom. I have nightmares about that song. <laughs> Today we have a special guest with us. She's a multilingual polyglot. She's lived and worked in different countries and she's here to tell us her story. Kami, thank you for coming today. How many languages do you speak and how yeah. did you learn them? <laughs> so I'm French, so I can speak French, obviously. I learned English and Spanish until university. I got a bachelor in business administration and foreign languages. So there I studied English, Spanish, and a little bit of Japanese, but it wasn't enough for me. So I decided to move to Japan and learn the language for one year there. And yeah, so I do speak Japanese. And then I moved to Korea. It's been one year now, and now I can speak also intermediate Korean. So I don't know how many languages that is, but I guess... Wait, so five? English, <laughs> French, French, Spanish, Spanish Japanese, Japanese, and Korean. Korean so I guess Korean. five. Yeah. Five. Uh, I guess, yeah. I know there's quadlingual, but what, what, penta something? What, what, do you, <laughs> what, what do you even call that for someone who speaks five? Right? <laughs> right. Penta, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. We need to hear some Japanese, though. We need to, the viewers need to hear you speak it, right? Okay, you, what do you guys want? <laughs> right, yeah, maybe just introduce yourself. To, well, we don't need to understand. The yeah. viewers, maybe some people can translate. You guys have some experience with Japan, so I think well, you I guys surely think. not understand. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> go for it. Okay, okay, I'll go for it. So, I'm Kamiu to be I'm 29 years old. I'm from Japan for 5 years. そこであの韓国に来ました。よろしくお願いいたします。なるほど。お願いします。すごいムービーや。いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや
communicate. I know that you know being able to socialize and be with people is so important. But what's your actual approach of like really learning it from scratch? As you said, like it depends on the language. So if you're a French person and you learn Spanish, I think it's very different <laughs> than if you're French and you and you try to like learn an Asian Asian language like Japanese, a language like Japanese. You need to study hard at the beginning. <laughs> and this, you have to go through like some books. It's good if you can have a teacher. I do think that it's good to have a teacher or a mentor that helps you through your, your studies. And then when you feel like you have a basic level, then from this part, you can just start like watching YouTubes or, you know, putting your, your phone settings in this language. Or I like video games. I put my video games in the language I'm learning. So right now, all my video games are in Korean. You know, it's like you need to immerse yourself in the language is the most important thing. But you do at some point need to be very like serious about the studies, you know, at least at the beginning to just very like learn the basic the basis of the of the language yeah but you need to just like everything you need to mix fun with a little bit of like serious and you know you need to be motivated at the end of the day if you're at level zero yeah. to use a game analogy right if the stat mm -hmm. if the, the stat is on zero yeah. how do you go from that like how long sorry does it take to go from that to being like pretty good it depends if you're in your country and you try to learn like japanese or korean or if you're already in that country i would say that if you're not in the country again it depends on your motivation and the time you have to you know uh study languages but i do feel like in one or two years you can you can have a a pretty good level but again this level involves like you know, different, like, different stuff, like, for example, how good you can speak, how good you can write, how good you can, you know, understand when you're listening to people speaking. Like, for me, for example, in, in Japanese or Korean, um, it's way easier for me to read, for example, than to speak. And also who you are as a person, because all of our brains work differently, and we do not have the same, we don't have the same brain to start with. So you got to do what works for you as well. Yeah, I really like that uh, Camille mentioned about having a good teacher because Clemente sitting there, I call him Crescense. Because <laughs> in, in, in French and Spanish, he has been fundamental, like in fundamental. correcting me on the spot, which means like instantaneous corrections. And I do the same when he speaks English. So having that person who's comfortable with you, who can correct you, is yeah. really useful. But I'm wondering, you said about the teacher. What what's a good teacher for you in this regard? How would you define like having a good teacher, and where do you find that good teacher as well? Yeah, that's the thing. That's very difficult. But that's why I made the choice to go to language schools directly because I just wanted to be completely immersed and to have really like intensive courses every day. So like I would go like four or five hours every day, five days a week. So you know, for me, it was a process where I did very intensive studies, but for people who do not have the same amount of time, I would say just an online teacher or, you know, and you have to test what is good for you because sometimes you will not have a good teacher right away. So you need to see, you know, how they make the class, if they make you speak a lot, if they know what they're talking about. But yeah, you need to find what, what works best for you. But I do think that online teaching or even YouTube resources and everything is very great. There's a lot of great, great uh, resources out there on the internet. I, I think it's very important to have uh, people in your circle that will correct you. Because sometimes, even when we're together and you speak French, you might say something wrong and it makes sense to me. It still makes sense. I understand what you mean. And I don't necessarily think about correcting you, but it's important that we actually do it, you know, so that, that can also put your learning to the next level. Right. I definitely felt that in Japan because, like, I think everybody knows that the Japanese people are very, very polite and they don't want to hurt your feelings. And, you know, sometimes you do make some mistakes and they don't necessarily tell you. But, like, sometimes I feel like you really need, like, this uh, correction for you to, you know, move on to yeah. the next level. So, yeah. It's the concept of Evolve, right? It's mm. the, the community. Uh, you know, we don't mean no harm when we correct each other. Yeah. It's only for the best. 
you know, to get the best out of our friends. And, you know, this is the message that we, we convey, I think. It's not about being rude or anything no. like that. Although I understand that yeah. sometimes <laughs> sometimes it's a bit annoying when you just yeah, stop you some, to say something someone is, you know, <laughs> you have, you know, you're with a friend of yours who's so enthusiastic about the story that he's telling and you're thinking, should I stop him to say that? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so he's just, you know, using the wrong words. Yeah. So, yeah. That's it's, true, that's it's, true. It's, it's, it's a bit tricky like that. It but is, it is. I'm just thinking, like, imagine you're going through a breakup and you're like, I miss her so much. <laughs> uh, El uh, Mamon case, like you know, that's not the mo the, the right time to do it. But I think <laughs> my advice is that, it, like, if I notice someone makes a mistake in English, mm. I won't embarrass them in front of other people. Yeah, exactly. I'll yeah. note it down and then tell them later. Mm. So then, yeah, you you can look out for each other and help each other without having to, you know, interrupt them in their right. passionate moment. Yeah. that's that's a very good point because <laughs> ultimately you're telling that person that they're wrong. You know, so if, if it's in a social context and there are people around, it's way better to do this after, as you mentioned. And in that way, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't seem impolite. I grew up speaking French and Spanish. They both have Latin roots. I think that I took for granted my ability to learn languages because of that. And then when I started to learn Korean, it was, you know, completely different because even when you learn English, if you're French, Spanish, you know, there are a lot of French words in, in English, right? So it makes it easy because you still have somehow a foundation, even if you don't speak any English. But then when you learn a language that has just no Latin roots at all, you kind of have to forget everything that you know about languages and just start from scratch. But that, that's the yeah. thing that people ask me a lot. They always ask me, like, when you speak Japanese or, like, when you speak Korean, do you think in French and then translate it in your head and then speak? But that doesn't happen at all with yeah. me. Like, when, when you arrive at, like, the point where you feel like you're in an advanced level, I would say, like, you don't, like, when I speak Japanese, it's just, you know, it's very natural, but it's totally different. Like, the grammar the words, like how they construct for, like sentences is totally different. Mm -hmm. And it can be frustrating. Like I, I do feel like when you start learning a language, it's really fun. It's new, you know, and also in Japanese, you have this like ch some Chinese character which had different meaning. It's really fun. And then you arrive to a point when it feels frustrating. Mm -hmm. You know stuff, but you can still not say like what you want to say. You know, you can say some some sentences, but like you cannot express yourself very like naturally, and that that gets a bit like frustrating. But once you pass that, I think that it's everything gets easier after that. Even if you want to learn other languages as well. I think you can apply that thinking to any skill as well. Yeah, in, obviously totally. Obviously, any language, but then any skill, because yeah, there, there's a graph that shows this. Actually, we usually have very high confidence yeah. when we start something. And then as that's because we don't know what we don't know, right? Yeah. And then we learn, oh, God, there's actually a mountain yeah. to climb. <laughs> so our confidence goes. Exactly. <laughs> right? exactly. But then after that, you slowly climb up. So, yeah, yeah it's great. It's so fun when you're able to place your first order at the restaurant. That's the most important thing. I did it, you I know? Did it. <laughs> and, then and then they ask you the next question, do you want ice with that? And you have no, no idea no. what you're talking about. No, no. And you start sweating and you're like, yeah, I probably need ice here. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, actually, that's a good one. What, what do you guys learn first when you learn new languages? What are the phrases and things that you learn first? Where do you need to survive the most? <sighs> that's difficult. But like in, in Korean, I guess that for me, I learned the, the words that were closest to Japanese because there's a lot of words that sound the same and are very, very similar. And because I know Hanja, I know Chinese characters, like for me, it's a little bit easier to you know remember some words. But when I came here first, I would say that how to order a cafe, how to <laughs> go to the <laughs> restaurant, how to, you know, speak at the at the Pionyi John, like the, the convenience store. I, I had to learn the, you know, basic sentences. But to do this, you have to, you know, get rid of like your, your pride or, you know, your the, the scary feeling you can have of making mistakes and embarrassing yourself, you know. And I feel like this can be difficult for a lot of people and you have to be you know you have to you know be in this mindset of i'm gonna make mistakes i'm gonna probably go through very embarrassing moments but 
once you go through this, you can do anything. Something that I've been telling myself since I moved to England is that people know that, you know, I'm not British. And here they know that I'm not Korean, right. obviously. <laughs> so they would, you know, it wouldn't be surprising to them if I don't speak the perfect yeah. English or, you know, the perfect Korean. But you don't think about that. You know, you just, you want to get the perfect, exactly. you know, you, you just want to get the perfect English, the perfect Korean or, you know, whatever language you're learning. But just forget about it, you know, it's just... <laughs> When you're learning, it's it's not perfect, and yeah, as you said, you shouldn't be afraid of making any mistakes, yeah. and yeah. because this keeps you away from actually like improving your yeah, language yeah. skill. Because usually that that fear that fear of not speaking perfectly, it's due to external factors. Yeah. You know, it's nothing that has to to do with yourself. It's just because you you think that you're gonna maybe look stupid in front of other people being or judged and mm, yeah. yeah and some being a embarrassing situation it can happen, <laughs> but at the same time it's just in my opinion you should see it as like it's part of the fun yeah it is you know it so is. and that's is if you don't make any mistake no no one's gonna correct you if you don't speak yeah and if you don't uh, try to speak it will never never get better yeah you know, mm. yeah exactly. I really liked when you said about not translating in the language, because even I between am. French and English and Spanish, like if you want to say you're right in French, we were joking with my Korean friend uh, yesterday. <laughs> you'd say like, oh, you have reason because, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, vous avez raison mm. means you're right. So that can already confuse things. Um, but I, I, I'm following up from what you said there, Clem, about like people not thinking that you're British or mm. Korean. I've got a slightly different approach on this, maybe because I'm mixed and I can kind of sometimes fool people that I might be half. But the goal that I think you should have when learning a language, if you're going to take it seriously, is try and convince people that you are from there. Mm -hmm. Maybe you might not convince people that your blood is Korean, but you, if you get to the highest level, you can convince people that you were born here. Or you've lived here for a long time. I mean, I always do my best with French people when we're out, True. you know. They often ask me, oh, you're French, you're from here. And I'm like, no, I'm, I'm English. And, they, you know, they have their kind of moment. And in Thai, I've been asked many times, uh, are you half Thai? Which is the biggest That's, compliment yeah, for me. So, so. Cool. And the, the thing I want to mention as well is when you spoke about, like, you know, in Latin uh, languages, there are a lot of similar roots. that You don't get that when you study Korean. But once you've studied Korean, Japanese, Chinese, and Thai and some of the South Asian languages as well, like uh, Sanskrit, Hindi, Urdu, there are many connecting words. Yeah, and then exactly. Jackson Arabic speaker and many of those cross the boundaries as well. So, for example, in Korean, how do you say 20? Egypt. Egypt. In Thai, mm. Egypt. Oh. Ha how do you say 30? Samship. 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 It's the same. You, you see, so it's pretty oh, much the oh, same. Oh, and oh, like uh, <laughs> the other thing in English, we say like, how are you? In most uh, East Asian languages, you wouldn't ask how are you, you'd ask... What would you say? Uh, have, you eat, have you eaten? This yeah. is the same in Chinese, actually. Yeah. I learned that from my friend. Yeah, in, in, like, in Thai, exactly the so same. Funny. Yeah. 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 Which all can be translated as have you eaten rice yeah. or have you eaten? And those, you, you can see, right? They all have that, those same links. Yeah. So you open yourself up to a completely new mm. world yeah. of, of these kind of intricacies and... Um, nuances between each language so it's, it's it's a beautiful journey once you once yeah. you start it True. so learn as many languages Definitely. as you can and fool people that you're yeah. from the country that should be the, yeah. the goal <laughs> fake it until you make it exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well to be honest we were we went to the market the other day and we like to ask the locals like where do they think we're from yeah <laughs> they said they thought he was british right. no way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. oh my how do you improve your accent well, I would say for me, I listen to a lot of music first. And I think that listening to, I mean, it kind of sounds cheesy, but listening to like Japanese music, if you learn Japanese or Korean music when you learn Korean is a really, really good, uh, you know, like training <laughs> for your accent. And also like for Korean, I think that watching dramas and just trying to repeat some of those, you know, sentences and all of that can be very good. And obviously speaking with locals. Speaking with locals is the is the best thing you can do, you know, and just, yeah, try to, you know, when you go to the supermarket to use the language or, you know, if you're traveling there, I think it's the, the best way to, you know, get a better accent, <laughs> I, I would say. 
Amazing. Um, <laughs> they, the guys know that we've been listening to a Japanese song quite a lot recently. Oh, uh, really? Go on, yeah. Jack. What? Uh, should I sing it? Yeah. <coughs> oh. Wait, wait, should I sing it how it's supposed to be yeah. sung? <laughs> yeah, sing it how I sing <laughs> it. Do it, do it, do it. All right. It goes... Lenny Blue. Oh, what a hat to Nadoni. Yeah, we've been no, listening to this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so whether they like it or song. not, I've been forcing them to listen <laughs> yeah. to it. Have you guys been to karaoke and stuff? <laughs> a lot. Too much, too wow. much, too much. Yeah, yeah. That's um, nice. I have nightmares about that. So. <laughs> <laughs> I have to bring this out on, on the podcast. <laughs> Come <laughs> read. Come in aside. Come in aside. Any final points before we wrap up? That's it. Final words. Makoto ni arigatou gozaimashita. Arigatou gozaimashita. Komsanmida. Thank you so much. If you enjoyed this conversation and would like to see more, please subscribe. Share this with people who you think would benefit. Chuck us a comment down below. Let us know where you are and which languages you're learning. And until then, a bientôt. Ciao. A bientôt.